You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering any type of minimally invasive facial rejuvenation. With us, we have Dr. Simon Orion. Dr. Orion, welcome to the program. Good to see you again. Now, we've had you on the program before. Yes. Uh, now, you're Thank the you busiest guy in, in L.A., maybe even in California, when it comes to these minimally invasive procedures. Is that right? That's right. I'm very proud of that. I started 10 years ago, and um, things just got better and better. We got the number one fortunate. Botox guy, is that true? Uh, it's true. We, we started um, 10 years ago and uh, we got very fortunate. Things, um, patients referred their friends and they kept coming and celebrities started coming and one by one they sent their friends and the celebrity friends and their You see a celebrity friends. every day, I've been told. Uh, probably Just every day, about. yes, but, but we really we treat everyone like they are a celebrity. To me, everyone who sits in my chair is a celebrity and it is my job to give them the best result possible. You say you don't watch for, TV, so sometimes you don't even recognize them? A lot of times I don't. I know I've seen their faces, but I don't know their names. My staff come back and they whisper in my ear, you know who that is? I'm like, <laughs> I, I right. guess I know. It, in reality, I like that fact. I like the fact that I treat everyone like they are a celebrity and they could turn out to be a celebrity. There are times that you sometimes you can't tell. They just come in ragged clothes and they sit down and I because they, they don't want to be recognized. I do my work and later on I find out they were famous okay. and and uh, but I do the same work for them as I do if I didn't know them at all and that's what I would like to but you get everyday people I mean who is your typical patient I guess it's not just for the rich our typical and patient anymore. is no um, because of the fact that nowadays cosmetic dermatology is so amazing you can do a lot with it and you can actually make a person look younger look better look uh, fresher in only a few minutes without major downtime, without pain, and with very minimal cost. It is for everyone. I have people who um, are employees of a, of a supermarket all the way up to celebrities and heads of states. There's no huge barrier because of financial background. So you get a lot of political people as well. Uh, you see them on the weekends. On the weekends. On Sundays, uh, people who are who can be easy to recognize, and for security reasons, we have to see them on, on Sundays. But um, again, my job is one thing, to try to give them the look that they want to look more refreshed, more natural, and especially for politicians and especially for celebrities, they want to look natural. Nobody wants to go out there and look like someone else. They, in fact, it becomes a huge ordeal. You can read it on the cover of Times Magazine if somebody gets too much Botox. There was a politician <laughs> recently who had a little bit of a Botox was done irregularly. I didn't do it. So a flat in the she middle. Had a fl he had a flat middle and the size of the eyebrows were going up, so he was looking like a sinister politician. That's not the look you want to have. In right. fact, it just basically ruined the whole campaign and this this is the and you can take it down all the way to the person who wants to just look natural for uh, her husband that's the job that I want to achieve now one interesting thing you know we've talked off camera you say that uh, and you know my age that you say that if I start going to you now that in 10 years without surgery that in 10 years that I'll look younger than I do today you believe that this is not just I don't, I don't but just you believe, believe that I, I fully, fully endorse it. I really think because of the fact that now the way medicine is moving, the way cosmetic medicine and aesthetic medicine is moving, every year we come up with something new, something better, and something more um, finely tuned. And if you take care of your face, the way you take care of your body, if you take care of your face by doing minor procedures, not nothing can major, you stop no aging? cutting, can you, you stop can aging? absolutely stop aging. At least the appearance, the appearance of, aging. of aging. Yes. Okay. I, I, you know, we all age. I'm going to, I'm going to grow older, my body's not going to be the same, but you can stop the appearance of aging, you can halt it, and you can delay it for many, many years to now, come. Now, as a cosmetic dermatologist, you think looks are very important. It isn't just because this is my trade and this is what I do. Truly, there have been studies that have shown that if you're a better than average looking person, in many, many ways, your life changes. You will have a better job. Your income will increase by 20% over your lifespan, which is more than if you had a master's degree. It's, it's mind-boggling to, to just Interesting. Not, assume, not realize this. If you just look a little bit better, I'm not saying to be a superstar, to just look better than average, your, more doors will be open to you. Now, it is up to you what to do with those doors, but it, once the doors are open, you know, it's your personality, your training, your education, your knowledge, those things will help you along the way. But to say that looks are not important or, not, or they don't play a role, I think is very naive. Do you find that in, in, in slower economic times, that people spend more money on themselves? I mean, is that, is that true? At least in, in my practice, I have seen this to be a 
to the case. When economy, but why should you, by the way? Then? Well, what happens is that when there's an economy go, takes a downturn, you still want to invest in something. Your home, if you invest more money in it, the value is not going to go up in the down economy. Your job, how much more are you going to invest in education? You're not going to get two years of education. But you can do a little bit of improvement in your appearance, and this is an investment in yourself. That will make you feel better, because more Because you look confident. more vibrant? You just look young. Uh, you know, whether you like it or not, this is a young youth society. And if you look better, you look younger, you look more attractive, I'm not here to endorse that. That's, these are the realities. If you look better, if you look younger, you'll have better jobs, you'll have better relationships, people will be more attracted to they you. They perceive you differently. They'll perceive you differently. And, and more importantly, you perceive yourself differently. You say I've you had, see big changes, by the way, in self-esteem. I've, I've, had, I've had patients, um, and I'll give you an example. Erica, she's, um, she's around 50 years old, and she came to me and she said, I want to do something about myself. This is a year ago. And we did minimally invasive procedures on her, just a little bit of a cool laser, a little bit of a injections just to make her look better. And to me, this is what I do every day. To, to, to me, this is everyday life. All right. She came back a year later, six months later, and she said, that little bit of change, which took me no more than perhaps 50 minutes of her life, changed her life dramatic, dramatically. She went back home, she started looking at herself, at herself a few days later, she looks younger. So she started to act like she was actually the way she did when she was 35. She really? started to join a gym, go out more. Just because you took care of her face. It's, it's, it's amazing how your appearance will have the effect on your psychology. It is a reverse effect on your psychology. And for someone, for okay. me to just sit down here and explain it to you, it's hard to believe. But it has, there have been studies that have proven uh, that if you look better, it's very easy to understand. You look better, you feel better about yourself, you become more confident, and you do better in life. You like what you do. What, uh, I mean, how did you get involved in this? And, and why this area of medicine, cosmetic dermatology? Number one, I've always been interested in aesthetics. I, I used to um, sculpt, I used to paint, and, but more than that, my, the way I got into this field was when I was 17, 16, 15, I always knew I had a crooked nose, I had a bad nose, and I had acne. Okay. And so I was, I was, for good or bad reason, I was very introverted, I was shy. And so you I didn't don't like know, your nose? I didn't like my nose, you and did, I didn't okay. know how to, re, how to fix it. I did know how to fix it, but everybody in my family, my parents, my relatives told me not to do it. When I turned 18, which was the legal age in California to go get your nose done without your parents' permission, I went and I got my nose done. Is that right? Absolutely. I got, got a nose paid job. For it? I paid for it with my own money, okay. and, I, and I got my nose done, and right after that, for two, three months later, once the swelling well down, was down, it was like a new person came out. I was not really? shy anymore. I started to have conversations with people. I was outgoing. I became a better, I was a better person to myself. Not because of the way people were treating me, but my self-esteem changed. I really thought of myself in a different way. I saw myself in the mirror and I really liked what I saw. And on top of that, other people tried, started to treat me a little bit differently. They realized that I'm not shy anymore. Do you think that was in your head, though, that people were treating Maybe you some of it just is because in of your my nose? Head. Maybe some of it is my, was, was in my head. But some of it is actually we have certain understandings and, uh, of how an attractive face is supposed to be. And frankly, my nose was crooked. So and it, it changed was, you. It, it changed really you. changed my life. And I thought at that point, I really made my decision. I thought if I could go through medical school, through the training, and do this for one other person, I have done my work for my life because wow. it really changes one's, a person's life. You can go throughout your life, you can do a lot of things, but nothing is as profound as giving someone self-esteem for the rest of their life, do especially a young person. you see that in other person. people, by the way? All the, that have that day. same type of every reaction? Day. Every day, people come in, they don't even know what they want to have done. They say, you know what, I just don't feel good, or I want to look a little bit younger. Or they have ideas that, you know, I want to get rid of my, make my lips bigger. It is my job, I sit down with them, I explain to them what are the things we can do and what I think is going to help them to look better. And once we've had that conversation, is I give them a menu. I say, this is like a buffet. You can choose from A, B, C, or D, or all of the above. But will, my job is going, then going to be to achieve the results that they came in for. And almost a huge number of our patients walk in even after the very first time looking and feeling better. By the way, is it uh, more uh, women than men? It sounds like it, it, we probably have seventy percent women. Are more but men Thirty percent men, which is surprising. What about age ranges? Age ranges. We, we see, start seeing people as young as in their twenties, if they have acne or acne scars, or if their skin is not the way they want it to be, all the way up to seventies and eighties. But the majority of our patients are in their thirties, forties, and fifties. So you did some of your training at UCLA. 
Yes, I, as important as it is that you get great training, and I always wanted to go, I went to, uh, I did my training at UCLA, and, but what really made me good at what I do is experience. Once I started my practice 10, 12 years ago, I started to see every single patient myself, and I did the, every single treatment day in and day out.